Can you wear turf shoes on artificial grass? This is a question that a lot of players have, especially now that artificial surfaces are becoming a lot more common. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about whether or not turf shoes are gonna be a good option for you, as well as how they compare to AG and FG football boots. I'm also gonna take you through a few tests that I did wearing turf shoes on artificial grass, just to see what the major differences were. And if you are currently on the market to grab a pair of turf shoes, I'll leave some links in the description where you can find some great options online. And to start off this video, I think it would be best to first clarify what exactly turf shoes are. So the profile of a turf shoe is actually going to be a lot closer to a sneaker than an actual football boot. As opposed to having longer studs, the sole plate of a turf shoe is going to be a lot more flat. And in place of those studs, you're actually just going to have a collection of rubber elements all throughout the sole plate. Now turf shoes come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes, but they generally all have this same design element. Generally, they're gonna be really, really sticky on the outsole, and they almost remind me of like a bike tire or a car tire. They essentially give you a great base level of traction, definitely more than you would get with a traditional flat top sneaker. And just for reference, the turf shoes I have here are the Joma Mundials that I picked up a couple weeks ago. So the next question we should address is where should you be wearing turf shoes? And well, this may seem pretty obvious, but you should be wearing turf shoes on turf. But the important thing to keep in mind is that turf is not exactly the same as artificial grass. AstroTurf or turf refers to a very thin, almost carpet-like material that's rolled over concrete. It's a very hard surface that you occasionally see outdoors, but is really popular indoors. Artificial grass, on the other hand, is a much softer surface that's thicker and has those rubber pellets that can often be annoying for players. In other words, artificial grass is much closer to natural grass compared to AstroTurf. If anything, turf is actually a little bit closer to playing on a flat surface. But while turf shoes do perform best on AstroTurf, that's not to say that you can't wear them in other situations. These are really well-rounded shoes that are still gonna give you a decent amount of traction on natural grass and artificial grass as well. And that's why in my opinion, it's always decent to have at least one pair in your locker. But it's important to keep in mind because of the shorter rubber elements on the sole plate of a turf shoe, you're gonna have a lot less traction on the pitch compared to an FG or AG boot where you're going to have these much longer studs. And that's going to bring us to our next portion of the video, which is how do turf shoes actually perform on artificial grass compared to boots that are really meant for the playing surface like the AG Tiempo Legend 9s that I have here. So to run this experiment, I essentially did three drills that I would typically do with FG or AG boots, and instead I tried them with my turf shoes. And for my first test, I decided to go with one of my favorite off-ball exercises, which was just a simple sprinting drill. For this drill, all you have to do is set up about five cones and then just sprint and backpedal to them in three different intervals. So this is a great drill for testing acceleration, deceleration, and just simple forward and backwards movement. And honestly, while doing this drill with the turf shoes, I felt that they were really reliable. I didn't feel like I had less grip than I would normally have when doing this drill with an AG or FG pair of boots, and I didn't feel like I had anything hindering me when I was speeding up or slowing down. Now, thankfully for me, this was a dry day when I was doing this. If the weather was more wet or if it was raining, I definitely could have had a different experience. That's just something important to keep in mind because the condition of the pitch can always have an impact. So overall, the first sprinting drill with forward and backwards movement, the turf shoes did great. Then for test number two, I did a really similar drill, but this time, instead of sprinting between the cones, I was dribbling between the cones. And how the drill works is when you dribble to the first cone, you're gonna go to slow tempo, taking light and controlled touches. Then as you're dribbling to the second cone, you're gonna take slightly heavier touches, moving at a quicker pace. Then as you turn to dribble to the third cone, you're gonna take your strongest touches possible while still maintaining control of the ball. And at this point, you should be moving at almost an all out sprint. So this drill is great for testing your dribbling at a variety of speeds and how well you can sharply turn around a cone. And as far as how well the turf shoes performed, honestly, at the slower speeds and medium speeds, like at cones one and cone two, I really didn't notice any difference between the turf shoes and the AG or FG boots. However, when I got to the third cone, when I was moving at a higher speed, I did notice just a little bit less stability and I didn't feel as secure when I was turning around the cones. But overall, if you're dribbling in a straight line, whether you're on natural grass or artificial grass or turf, you're gonna be fine wearing these shoes. It's only when we got to the third drill that I tested these shoes the most. And that was when I did figure eight dribbling. Now the thing that's kind of tough about figure eight dribbling is that you're constantly changing direction. And throughout the entire drill, there's a lot of lateral and side to side force between the bottom of your shoe and the surface you're playing on. And this lateral force was definitely most noticeable for me when I was in the middle of the figure eight and the change of direction was the greatest. And when doing this drill with the FG Pumas and the AG Nike Tiempos that I have here, I felt really, really locked in. I almost felt like I could carve into the surface with these boots and there was no point where I felt like I was at any risk of slipping. 
AG and FG boots are just gonna let you feel a little bit more comfortable taking risks when you're moving and changing directions really quickly. However, when doing the figure eight drill with the turf shoes, I definitely felt a little bit more limited. I felt like I had to slow down between turns just so I could maintain some traction with the ground. And I just didn't get that locked in feeling that I got from the other boots. And for me, this drill just highlighted why I would not wear turf shoes when playing a competitive match on artificial grass. But that's not to say there aren't still some great uses for turf shoes. So I wanna quickly run through the overall pros and cons of the turf shoes. So let's talk about the pros. And the first thing I have to point out is that these shoes are just so comfortable. Now, obviously not every turf shoe is gonna fit the same as the Jomas that I have here, but generally I think there's just a pattern where turf shoes give you a slightly more relaxed feel that's closer to something like a sneaker. Whereas AG and FG boots, while not necessarily uncomfortable, are definitely gonna be a little bit more aggressive and not quite as comfortable in my opinion as the turf shoes. They just have a really nice, relaxed and casual feel to them. And I think part of the reason that they're comfortable is that you also have all of the pressure really evenly distributed across the entire sole plate. And this means that you're never gonna experience uncomfortable stud pressure when you're wearing a turf shoe, which is something you could run into when wearing an AG or FG boot. And the final pro is that turf shoes are just gonna be great for casual settings. So if you're playing a light pickup game or you're just a beginner trying to learn the basics of the game, these are a great option, even if you're gonna be playing on AG. Then as far as the cons are concerned for turf shoes, definitely the first biggest one to point out is that your traction is gonna be limited when you're changing directions. And that's because as I mentioned, turf shoes were initially designed for harder carpet-like surfaces, not the softer artificial grass that we see more often today. And if you are in a competitive scenario, you will be at a slight disadvantage if you're wearing turf shoes and all the other players are wearing AG or FG boots. So if you are someone like me who plays on artificial grass a lot, you might be wondering at this point in the video, what should I get? So thankfully there are great options if you're a player who most frequently finds themselves on AG surfaces and the first would be designated AG football boots. Now of all the brands on the market, Nike does have the widest selection of AG boots because they offer every single one of their models, including the Tiempo, the Mercurial, and the Phantom with a designated AG sole plate. Here, I'll show you up close what it looks like. Essentially, it's very aggressive, just like the normal FG sole plate, but instead of having any bladed studs, it just has a higher concentration of these conical studs. And what these conical studs are gonna do is allow for more free rotation so that you don't get any of your studs stuck in the artificial surface. But nevertheless, artificial grass boots like this are gonna provide you a lot more traction and grip on the surface compared to turf shoes. Adidas and Puma also have some great options available for artificial grass as well. And in addition to specific AG models, you can actually just use any football boot that has conical studs on AG surfaces. So the Nike Premier 3, the Copa Gloro, the New Balance 442 V2 Pro, and the Mizuno Morelia are all gonna be great options for AG. Just make sure you don't get SG boots, which is a mistake that some players make. SG boots are only made for natural surfaces and have really long metal studs that are built for digging into the ground. And if you're looking to pick up any of the boots that we just mentioned, I'll leave links in the description where you can find them online. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you do have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Head over to the Patreon as well if you're looking to support the channel. I've got some exclusive content on there and I'm looking to do some Q&As there in the future. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.